Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Coming up this week, we're going to discuss changes to Disneyland's annual pass blockout dates for next year, as well as progress on the construction at Pixar Pier at Disney California Adventure. We're also going to take a look at some cool new merchandise that's available around Disneyland, and we're going to introduce a new segment called Same But Different, Comparisons Between Things at Disneyland and Walt Disney World. All that coming up next. From the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida, and from points around Southern California, this is the Disneyland edition of the Diz Unplugged. This is the Diz Unplugged Disneyland edition, episode 731 for the week of... June 11th, 2018. The Diz Unplugged is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect Disneyland vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Well, welcome to the show, everyone. Coming to you from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined by my co-host, in this show and endeavor, Mr. Rhino Clavin. Hello, everyone. And out in California, our producer, Mr. Tyler Crouch. Hi, everyone. Along with our Disneyland editor, Ms. Katrina Manzoni. Hi, everyone. Yep. There she is. Okay. <laughs> we have been uh, <laughs> we have been playing around with this uh, setup um, to be able to bring the show uh, video. Uh, obviously, we are uh, changed. We've changed a lot of things around. This is going to be a somewhat different show than uh, the show that was before, namely that this is also video, whereas that was audio, but also kind of changing our focus a little bit in this show, uh, gearing it more towards folks who are planning trips to Disneyland. And uh, we thought having uh, the perspective of locals in uh, Katrina and Tyler, as well as some other folks that will be joining us uh, in the weeks to come from out in California, as well as having folks out here in Orlando uh, that uh, travel out there quite a bit, but have to travel there. Um, it's not like getting in our car and, and driving there. So kind of blending those perspectives. So it's a little bit of a different take. Uh, we're not going to do uh, the news in the way that we do it on uh, other shows. These are pre-recorded, uh, not live. And so uh, we're we're deciding... We'll focus on some things, whatever whatever's topical for, for that particular week. And uh, then we'll be doing different focuses in the middle of the show. No rapid fire, um, but we'll be doing some focuses in the middle of the show. For example, this week, we're going to do a focus on some, some cool merchandise that we found when we were just recently out uh, in Disneyland. And then we will have our discussion block, which this week is we're calling Same But Different. Um, which is uh, things that are very similar at both Disney World and Disneyland, but also very different. Stay tuned, you'll understand. <laughs> so with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about this week are the changes that were announced to Disneyland's annual passes for next year. Um, uh, recently, in the last few years, Disneyland changed their annual pass system uh, into different tiers, actually trying to discourage, I think is a safe bet, uh, discourage annual pass holders from signing up because they had so many of them. It was causing a lot of issues in terms of crowds. Um, and so, you know, the top tier signature passports and the premier passports didn't have any blackout dates, but the deluxe passes uh, did. And those are the passes that are being affected here. So uh, Disney's statement was, quote, as our business evolves, this is the first step in reshaping our annual pass program, which will better manage the guest experience and allow all Disneyland Resort visitors to have a great visit, particularly as we look forward to the opening of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge in the summer of 2019. Um, uh, so basically what's happening is uh, they are now doing two different blockout calendars, if I've got this correct. One for Disneyland Park, one for California Adventure. So, for example, next June, Disneyland Park is blocked out Friday through Sunday, as well as the entire last week of June next year. 
And uh, so it's really, uh, first of all, a lot of people are speculating that that means Star Wars. Star Wars will open, Galaxy's Edge will open that week. But now, Tyler, uh, and you and Katrina are, are both pass holders out there. What's your take on, on these changes? I mean, this is something that needed to happen, uh, unfortunately. Uh, just Disneyland is so crowded already the way it is. Um, and it's going to get worse when Star Wars opens because that is also going to bring in not only Disney fans, but also lots of people who are not quite Disney fans, also just Star Wars fans. And um, I, it's something that needed to happen. And it's something that I'm kind of happy is happening. Really? Because, yeah, because... Um, I just, again, it, Disneyland is so crowded on a regular basis that a lot of times Katrina and I will just duck out to California Adventure. We'll be at Disneyland for about an hour and then be like, oh, it's so crowded here. And we'll go to California Adventure, you know, for the rest of the day. It's just well, it's just kind of the natural way that we've been doing things because Disneyland is just so packed on a regular basis. What tier um, pass do you guys have? Well, we have the, the premier pass. So, I mean, it doesn't affect our pass. Like Pete was saying earlier, it only uh, it only it will only affect the deluxe and lower. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I, I'm, I, I actually worry that for the first year that a lot of people are going to upgrade and maybe we'll see an, we're still going to see a big uptick in uh, the amount of people that are at the park, uh, even with this change. And, you know, part of this is that, you know, we've said it many times on other shows, Disneyland is in many ways a locals park. So right. the number of annual pass holders, especially given the age of the park, 1955, uh, its place in uh, Southern California culture, the number of annual pass holders for Disneyland, I would almost guarantee dwarfs uh, what we have at Walt, Walt Disney World. Oh, yeah. I mean, the fact that they charge more out here for annual passes than they do in Florida you know, can can pretty much show you that, yeah, there's a demand for the passes out here and they're going to keep on jacking up the price until until they can't get that money anymore. And I think the biggest downside that I see is that California Adventure could get a lot more crowded, you know, during those days where there are not blackouts at California, but there are at Disneyland. But now if um, you were if you were a signature pass holder, if you were being affected by these blackout dates, blockout dates, excuse me, um, how would you feel? I mean, it is a bummer, but at the same time, I, I, I think I would go in saying, oh, man, uh, more money. I, I don't know about that. But then at the same time, it, it, it kind of needs to happen. When I think about it with my logical brain, it's just kind of like this is the type of thing that, of course, was going to happen. Could, uh, it, it's Star Wars is going to wreck that place. I mean, it really is. It's going to be so crowded. So and it, I mean, it, even... Go ahead, go, as go ahead, a, like as a local, I feel like if you really wanted to see Star Wars, you would upgrade to a higher pass so you can see it when it's open. But if you're a local, I think if you have a deluxe pass, you know you're going to go like August, September, October, and you have all that time to go see it. But if you really, really wanted to see it that day, you would either like try to upgrade your pass and pay extra for it. Uh, but I, I don't know if a lot of the SoCal people, they don't. I, for me, I feel like they just go when they don't have anything to do to go to like California, like to Disneyland. Uh, so they might just stick with it, but they're definitely going to upgrade their prices. They're going to like jack up their prices a lot. I think about it in terms of like, um, <clears throat> so when I get my annual pass, Eli renews his too, and he has a different one than I do. Obviously, he doesn't go to Disneyland, um, but uh, uh, he his was like the top tier where you can have no blockout dates and then there was the one below it where you could have the blockout dates and they were like well it's two weeks at christmas and it's this time at easter and i was like well let's be realistic i'm not coming the two weeks of christmas because either one you'll be traveling or it'll be so packed that as a local you're not going to enjoy your experience yeah you do want to go to see the holiday stuff but at the same time you can you're used to when it's less busy and then also it's spring break you're like it's or, or easter it's like way too packed so i always think like well if you weren't gonna go anyways why but would even you, you but know? even for us as locals here in orlando and this is what has always struck me is is the cultural difference mm. between locals here in orlando True. that are disney fans and locals in southern california who are disney fans yeah um right. it, it's just different 
it's just different where we might say, yeah. oh, I'm not going through Christmas, uh, over Christmas. I think there are a lot of people in Southern California who are saying, I'm not doing Christmas without going. Yeah. Um, so I think it's it's a very different it's a very different dynamic out here yeah. than it is out yeah, there. Yeah, I, I I think a lot of people grew up with Disneyland in Southern California, you know, and exactly. it was it's just been a staple of Southern California culture at this point. Like it it truly is. Um, I, I I can't. It's like everybody in Southern California has been to Disneyland and loves Disneyland. It's it's kind of amazing. So it's just it, it's. it's just, it's less of a process uh, to get into your park too, so it's a little, you know, what Pete's talking about with the yeah, it much, being kind much of cultural different. To enter, yeah, yeah. It, like we have to be like, okay, it, you know, it's forty-five minutes for me to get there to Magic Kingdom from my house, and then forty-five minutes from my car just to get into the main <laughs> entrance of Magic Kingdom, and then I'd super crowded. Whereas you guys can be like, well, I'll park down the street, you know, and or I'll Uber and get dropped off right at the entrance and walk through. You know, it's a little bit of a spoiled. Uh, Spoiled thing I, I used to there, I used to really dislike the trams like uh, because I when I started going to Disneyland and I was a kid the parking lot was right at Disneyland and you just walk right into Disneyland so then when they built the trams I was like oh come on but then I have tried to go to Magic Kingdom in Florida oh, yeah and it is the worst so it's now terrible. I have a new appreciation yeah now the, I have a new appreciation for the trams I <laughs> I can't tell you the number of times that I sat here and said, oh, you know, really, let's go to the Magic Kingdom today. And then I stop and think what I'm going to have to go through to get yeah. there. Um, yeah. Especially depending on time of day. Dealing with the traffic on I-4 can be a nightmare heading in that direction. Then once you finally get there, you know, it's yeah. six of one, half, half dozen of another if you're taking the monorail or the ferry. Um, yeah. right. I, I'm always grateful when I'm staying at one of the monorail resorts, though. But anyway, um, now, Katrina, uh, do you do you agree with Tyler that this uh, this uh, these block out dates that they're imposing on the two different parks are a good thing? Yes, I think it's beneficial for um, absolutely because like I, like kind of was Rhino was saying before, I had a signature pass before where it was blocked out that like two weeks of Christmas, and for me, I was just like I'm never going to go to Disneyland like the two weeks of Christmas because that is a nightmare to go to Disneyland and then so I feel like it is it's beneficial for them to do this for the deluxe pass to kind of weed out the people to make sure to get the paying like per day ticket people in the park to get money that way it it's hard because it, it does also become one of those things where you know it, it, <laughs> There's just more people on Earth. There are more people that want to enjoy this. You get, you know, one person. They come together. They create three people. Then those people create three people that, like, have. It's been in their family and generations to go to this place, and it's hard to see that the only way to get people to be like, you can't come all the time, is to be like, well, now I've priced you out of it. You know, it's a. But it's how else do you? How else? But do that's you also capitalism. That's exactly. you know supply and demand. Yeah. Uh, and Disney is a business after We've all. We've done this to ourselves. <laughs> yeah. We've created our own monster. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I just can't see, Disney I, fans. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't see a less irritating way. I mean, it's irritating to raise the prices, yes, but I think it would be more irritating if they did, I don't know, a lottery system or something. Who oh, knows? Oh, for what sure, a hundred percent. You know, it's like there's a million other things they could have tried that, and this seems the least invasive to me. Yeah. So. I think if they did a lottery system, I would be really upset if I didn't get in that area. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I missed out on seeing that park. Because theme parks in Japan, they do do a lottery system. So, mm. All right. We are going to move on and I uh, want to talk about uh, some of the closures and changes happening at Downtown Disney. And I'm not misspeaking. It is still Downtown Disney there. <laughs> for those of you used to the world side of things, where we're calling it <laughs> Disney Springs now, there it's Downtown Disney. And um, they are making some massive changes over there, mainly because they're about to build another new hotel. So, uh, Tyler and Katrina, talk to me about these closures. We're losing, uh, uh, we're losing the early sandwich, the AMC theaters, the ESPN zone. Uh, I believe uh, Rainforest Cafe is going away. Yeah. Um, yeah. Talk to me about and these changes. And Starbucks. And Starbucks. Yeah. I have very little problem with any of that. Um, talk to me about these changes and what the timeline is of what people can expect. 
Uh, well, everything has to close by June 30th. I, ESPN Zone already closed as of the 2nd of June. Uh, I believe uh, the majority of everything else is closing. I think Earl of Sandwich is closing on the 7th. And uh, what else is closing? There's a lot of things closing on the 7th, but pretty much everything's wrapping up by like the 17th to make sure everything is demol like closed down by the 30th. So I'm just wondering, what is this process going to be like for the people at the Disneyland Hotel and Paradise Pier who walk that way? That's what we're yeah. wondering, too, because we loved going through the security entrance at downtown Disney by the ESPN zone where the Disneyland Hotel is. Uh, there's less, there's less, like, less of a line than on the other side of the ESPN zone. So for me, I, I'm curious if they're just going to build like a weird tunnel. For... I, I think that's probably what it's going to have to be. And, and the other thing that I'm curious about is when they start actually really getting full bore onto this hotel construction, it looks like the monorail station is a part of the hotel. Hmm. So I'm curious if the monorail is going to be closed for like long periods of time or if they're just going to keep it open and try and just in, in, uh, integrate it, you know, uh, without closing it. But there's going to be a lot of, uh, of, of, of kind I, of, I imagine things. And I imagine it's going to have a massive impact on the people staying at the Disneyland hotel. Oh yeah, uh, exactly. And especially for those staying in, uh, the, uh, um, oh Lord, what tower is that? That's right there. The adventure, uh, Fantasy, the, the adventure, no, adventure land, the adventure, yeah. the adventure land tower, the adventure tower, um, because that's the concierge tower. So my big question about this is, um, how are, how is that going to impact guests who are supposed to be able to walk from the Disneyland hotel into, isn't that the question I just asked? Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Wake oh, up. I'm sorry. Wake up, no, honey. no, no. Okay. So know, the tunnel. I know. It's a different show. So, okay. Well, that's okay. when they were talking about maybe having a tunnel. We're Let's not sure. say they don't have a tunnel. I, you know, that, that's, that's what we're going to find out. Uh, yeah. I don't, think I, we, I don't know where know else they could redirect it. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm also worried about the people, you know, it's concierge tower and there's a lot of suites up there too. And it's like, so now your view in your hotel room will be the backside of a hotel. Um, so, you know, they're going to have to change up. It's not going to be theme park viewing or, or fireworks viewing any longer. How, how tall is this hotel. hotel supposed to be? I believe it's going to be around the same size as Disneyland Hotel. It's definitely going to be a height that they will not be over the sea uh, over. I mean, yeah. Well, I have to imagine they're not going to block the concierge lounge, which is the very top floor of the Adventureland Tower. Um, I, I can't imagine they're going to block that. Yeah, when I look at the concept art, it looks like it's a decent amount of uh, stories, but uh, that's they haven't give us any details on exactly how tall it'll be or anything. And yet, so. and this is going to be um, this is going to be a, a deluxe five star hotel, um, mm -hmm. is what we've heard, correct? Yes. Yeah, it's, or is it five star or? Four? Yeah, it's yeah, it's a it's a well, what are they calling it? Four Diamond Hotel or something? Oh, yeah. Four Diamond. Diamonds. That's but, right. Um, but it, it, it is definitely going to be the nicest hotel on property and expect it to be the most expensive hotel on property. Which is saying something when you consider the price of the Grand Californian. It is not difficult for a, a night in that hotel to go $600, depending on the season. Um, right. You can find rates and dates that are a little bit better than that. But I'm talking for a standard room here. So if this is going to be more expensive than that... Um, you know, they're going to have to build something spectacular. Oh, yeah. But what about the sound as well? Like, if I'm staying at the Adventureland Tower and they're working on all of this, like, yeah. how loud is it going to be? Am I going to be irritated, like, the whole time I'm staying there? Because I might want to, like, decompress and, like, stay in the room and take a nap or something on a really busy day. It and, like, how, how is that going to affect everybody staying in that tower? It honestly feels like by building this next tier up hotel, it actually lowers the Disneyland's level by another. So if the Disneyland hotel was up here, it's now down here to me in well, terms of, like, quality, quality and benefit. Technically, if we're going to draw the comparisons between world and land, um, Paradise Pier is considered the value um, Disneyland Hotel is considered the moderate. Oh, really? Okay. And if you look at the pricing structure, just look at the the base pricing structure. Uh, Disneyland Hotel would be considered a moderate, and uh, 
Grand California considered a deluxe. Now, it's an unfair comparison because yeah. we have no moderate hotel that comes anywhere close to the Disneyland hotel. But in terms of their pricing structure, now, of course, they yield their prices like everybody else in the industry. So sometimes, you know, if Paradise Pier is 95% full and Disneyland Hotel is 65% full, you will find cheaper prices at the Disneyland Hotel than you will at uh, Paradise Pier. Oh, really? Yes, oh, absolutely. Wow. It's, all, it's always good to check yeah. all the rates. But nonetheless, uh, this construction is going to go on for an extended period of time. It will probably start. Uh, do we have do we have a date when they're going to start clearing land? Is it going to be right after they close these places? Or I would assume that they would try to do it like as soon as possible, as soon as like, everybody's like out of there. But to try to get it, it done by was it twenty twenty one when it's like when the hotel's supposed to be finished? Yeah, I believe it's twenty twenty one. And I, if they're closing these businesses, you know that's just lost revenue. And I would expect them to try and get started on this stuff as fast as possible. If you actually look at the uh, if you actually look at the parking lot over by Grand Californian, they're they're already getting like a construction zone together there. So the self parking at Grand Californian has a bunch of equipment and stuff sitting there, and I expect that that's all in preparation for 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 this hotel. I noticed that on our last day when I was leaving, I was like, "What is all this for?" It was all yeah. like it made it look like Grand Californian was under construction, and that's why I was a little confused. And uh, I, I remember one of you guys saying to me when I was out there last week uh, that some of these stores, some of these businesses that are being closed are actually going to be moving into the hotel once it's built, that it's going to be kind of like a mall in there. There's definitely going to be shopping and food in the hotel. What we don't know is what exactly will be moving over to the hotel itself. I would I would put a solid bet on there being a Starbucks, and I would put a solid bet on there being a, a Earl of Sandwich. The other ones I'm not so sure about. ESPN Zone is definitely gone. It was the last one of its breed. Um, there's no more ESPN Zones anywhere now. Uh, and then Rainforest Cafe. I mean, maybe it'll come back. I know that they like to do business with Disney, and Disney likes to do business with them. So maybe it'll be back. Who knows? Who can say? Uh, Rainforest Cafe doesn't seem like it's as, as exciting as it was back in the 90s though you know what i'm saying so it doesn't feel like it belongs in a four diamond hotel that's yeah. for sure yeah that's true like a too. downgrade yeah if, yeah um so right, well, I, 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 go ahead yeah, go ahead, no, go ahead. I, I just can't see many of those places moving into the actual hotel that was all i was going to finish up okay with. well while we're talking about construction let's talk about the other area that is currently under construction but scheduled to open in a couple of weeks and that's Pixar Pier. What can you tell us about what's happening at Pixar Pier right now? Well, a lot of stuff has been going on. It's 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 where to start even. Well, first of all, Nick Nick Snacks has opened up recently, which was an old shop. Um, I'm blanking on the name of something Treasures. I always forget it because I didn't go in there very often. But Nick Nick Snacks has, you know, they they put Pixar art all over the walls. They have all this brand new uh, Pixar merchandise. It's actually really a really fun store to go into just because it's so much new stuff that we've never seen before. They have those new Wally sweatshirts that uh, that everybody wanted. And and then also right next to Nick Snack, Nick Snacks, it's really hard for me to say that, uh, they have the adorable snowman uh, frozen treats. God, which, the uh, lines for that place were absurd. No, I really wanted to try oh, it. <laughs> it's it's kind of incredible. And it's, so imagine, imagine Dole Whip but, or even like the orange bird, uh, the orange uh, whip. I'm not sure what you guys call it out there, but it's lemon. It's the same exact thing, but lemon, and it's it's very Citrus lemony. Swirl. Um, they they don't, you know, the little guy. He's holding up snow cones, and I would expect there to be snow cones, but they don't have any. I'm kind of sad by that. Well, isn't that but, the whole uh, thing in the movie? He peed in the snow. Exactly. So it's, that's I mean, why I thought it was snow cones at first, and I was like, yeah. oh, it's creamy. Okay. No. The, <laughs> Then they even call the joke is it's pee. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, and yeah. and and it, they even call the flavor it's lemon. So yeah. <laughs> you know, they're like they know what they're doing. Um, so those two places have opened up uh, recently. Cove Bar has finally shuttered its doors uh, for the last time, Sad. and uh, it, it's gone for good now. We're getting the Lamplight Lounge in there, which should be really exciting. Katrina, you want to talk about the food in there that? You wrote the article about? I did. Uh, oh, my gosh. I'm excited for the food. They have these, like, 
potato like pillows there's like that was like the main dish i really want to try is they're kind of it's like an, a take on potato skins so uh it's kind of like uh, a baked potato where they like fluff it up like they fry it really hot so it like kind of poofs up but then they make it kind of cool and like arty so they put like i don't know if that's a word arty uh it's like two <laughs> <laughs> they like they smear like two different kinds of aioli around the plate to make it colorful and uh and then they have like a take on sushi so they have like a like a carne asada sushi which seems Ooh. kind of strange but it's like fully cooked steak um and then for like the little kids because they see their parents eat sushi and i thought this was kind of clever is they made like a peanut butter and jelly sushi for like the little kids okay i'm in i'm, I, I I'm in that. on the peanut yeah. butter and jelly yeah. sushi <laughs> It was really cute. And then um, they did like a little flower pot. It's like really tiny. And they put hummus in there with uh, like some veggies for the kids to be healthy. Um, and then what are the other? They have like downstairs, they have like a full menu. They're going to have like reservations so people can go eat in there. Um, and then upstairs where the Cove Bar used to be is they're going to have just like small snacks, like snack bites. And they're definitely going to have the lobster nachos for sure. Like, don't worry, Randall. Okay. I was, <laughs> I was getting a little bit of like sweating a I know, little bit like, here oh, waiting gosh. for you to say it. But yeah. but, but you also were telling me that they have, um, Craig and I really enjoy a brewery out there, Bottle Logic, that they're going to have one of those, one oh, of yeah. their beers they're featured there. A, which is They're going to have a special beer just for you guys. I know. Uh, yep. And they didn't say what kind of beer it is yet, so I would I would like to know if what kind of I mean I can't have the beer, but I'm curious to know if it's gonna be like an IPA or if they're gonna make it like a special kind of uh, beer like it's, associated to kind of like Pixar, like what yeah, they would it, drink. It's definitely only gonna be available at Lamplight Lounge. There's it's not gonna be anywhere else. So it's it's cool to see that they're kind of getting into the game like Universal did yeah. with um, with making their own specialty beverages. And then when we move down the way there, they're, they've been working real hard on Incredicoaster. The, they've been changing up the uh, the California Screamin'. And now the whole story is going to be Jack-Jack is there. He's trying. He's Edna Mode is babysitting him, and he's trying to escape from her. And he's using all of his little powers to get by. And so you're going to run into each of the Incredibles uh, throughout the entire ride. Every tunnel is going to have a different uh, family member in it. And I'm really looking forward to it because they're going to add a bunch of little effects. There's going to be the Incredibles music, and now with the with the construction that's been happening, you can finally hear Dash say his little spiel in the beginning. So you hear Dash go five, four, three, two, one, you know, and then it takes off. Um, so that looks like it's going to be a really exciting change. And then right next to that, we have Jesse's uh, Critter Carousel, which is not going to be opening until next year. That's so weird. that's that kind is, of odd. Yeah, they've barely started construction on that at all, and it's so we have a long way to go for that one. It's going to be closed. Um, Is it going to be the critters like in Toy Story, like the things that you win during the attraction? So you get to ride it's, that like dead cat and the a very sim. Well, it's not going to be exactly those, but it'll be a very similar art style. It's going to be you know the Woody's Roundup art style. You okay, know, like, gotcha. Think of, it, think of like Toy Story two, and you can picture the art style. Uh, and uh, as we move down, there's going to be the uh, – I'm blanking on the name right now, but there's going to be a little chicken shack, a uh, little – it's basically – that's the whole Toy Story world, Senor right? Senor Buzz so Churros be... and Poultry Palace, correct? Yeah, Poultry yeah. Palace. That's what it is. And oh so Poultry God. Palace Senor Buzz, is basically – Yeah. So Poultry Palace is basically a, uh, a Happy Meal. Picture a giant Happy Meal that you're standing next to. <laughs> and uh, you're going to be able to get you know chicken wings and things there for the kids. Right next door is going to be Senor Buzz's, as we mentioned, which is just going to be a churro cart. But it's nice to see like some some high quality theming go into it. Yeah. Well, these were and, this this was based off that uh, that short uh, uh, Toy Story tune, was it? Small Fry. Well, the, the, well, uh, Buzz the Poultry is, Palace was. Poultry yeah, the Palace. Poultry Palace. Because Buzz is Spanish yeah. in the third. Right. Buzz. In the third one, yeah, yeah we have the Spanish yeah. one, but. Yeah, Poultry Palace is definitely based off of one of the shirts. Um, and then right next to that, we've got uh, Angry Dogs, which is going to be based on the uh, Inside Out character, Anger. You know, oh. and each 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 hot dog that you can get is going to be a different level of anger, and that'll determine how spicy they are. That's oh. cool. So so that seems like kind of fun, actually. You know, for somebody who doesn't really eat a lot of hot dogs, I might have to go get one. Um, I eat a lot of hot and, dogs. I'll go with you. <laughs> 
they're working on the games over there. They've got they've got all bunch of brand new games. They have a new Wally game uh, that's gonna that's kind of replacing. Yeah, the I just want to say Craig is cracking up right now. <laughs> okay, I like hot dogs. Come on, man. It's a drop in. It's a drop in for anybody who's interested. You pre- feel, feel free to use that. <laughs> anyway, um, Wally, you were saying. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, the fun wheel, Mickey's fun wheel, is being converted into uh, the Pixar Pal Around, which. It's basically you're still going to have Mickey's face on the front of the wheel, but now each uh, gondola is going to have a different um, pair of Pixar pals. And so, you know, Merida and her and the bears are going to be on on one and, you know, Wally and Eve are going to be on another one. And so that looks like a lot of fun, too. Um, Then the last thing that they haven't even begun on yet uh, is they haven't even announced it yet, but it looks like they're going to. We all know that Bugs Land is closing uh, at the end of the summer. And it looks like they're going to take Flix Flyers and they're going to put it over where the Malaboomer used to be. So that's basically, if you think about where hmm. uh, the Incredicoaster is, it kind of loops around on the right-hand side there. They're just going to smack a ride right in the middle there. And it's just going to basically spin around and they're going to theme it to Inside Out. So Oh, I was thinking um, they, were, they would just keep it as Flix and like just pick no. it up and move it. Cause because if they get the way rid of Bugs Land... Right. Well, the thing is, is that Pixar Pier is uh, split up into four different neighborhoods. There's going to be the Incredibles neighborhood, Toy Story neighborhood. Gotcha. Um, and then the Pixar, then there's going to be a middle one that's just like uh, all Pixar. They're just going to encompass all Pixar. Mm-hmm. And then the far right one is going to be Inside Out. So those are the four th- neighborhoods that we can expect. I think the only like a bug's life thing they're actually going to have is that game that they're going to theme off a of Heimlich and you uh, and you do something with a, like a candy corn that's going to be with right. the, the boardwalk games. Okay. I miss, yeah. I miss candy corn. <laughs> I can't have candy corn on this diet. I love candy oh. corn. Candy corn's pretty good. I think it gets a bad rap. Oh, I love it. It's one of my favorite things. Yeah. One of my favorite things. <laughs> we should have uh, ridden Heimlich's before you left. So you could have uh, like had a big whiff of the, it isn't like you get smell like the candy corn. Yeah. Thank you. You want to torture the, me. <laughs> you torture me here. Here, you can't have this. Smell it. And while you're at it, here's some wine oh, you can't I have. I do. I smell beer and stuff. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's move on, and uh, we're going to talk about some merchandise. And I believe Katrina, you have something to share with us. Someone said merchandise, and I got like happy. All right, so I posted a picture on uh, the Facebook page. They came out with these cool mugs for uh, the Disney afternoon. Uh, Shows that we all remember in the 90s. So, like, my first one is going to be Rescue Rangers. So, if you can get... Love it. Look at this. Love it. And then the other side. So, if you're listening, it's Chip and Dale on the front in the classic Rescue Rangers logo. And then they've got the whole group on the back. And Yeah. And then what and so, is that? And you're showing us inside the mug. What's so inside? So, inside, I don't know if you can see the... I don't it's the Rescue Rangers it. Oh, the, the Rescue logo. Rangers logo. The Rescue Rangers logo. Yeah. And uh, and cool thing is, is they're uh, dishwasher safe and microwavable safe. And how much are they? Throw that out there. <laughs> and then they, uh, they run for what? about they run for about thirteen dollars. Okay. Yeah, like twelve ninety five, I think. Yeah. And then we have, of course, Ducktales. Everybody knows and loves classic Scrooge Ducktales Duck. too. It's the uh... yep, yep, classic Ducktales with Uncle Scrooge and Louie, Dewey, and Huey right there. Yep. And then what's inside? Woohoo! Look at that. Woo-hoo. And then. Their treasure, a little treasure map. Oh, that's back, cool. On the bottom. I like how every single one has like a different kind of uh, like attribute, you know? And then uh, Darkwing Duck, we all know and love. Yeah. What's the reason why they didn't have uh, gargoyles? Is that because it wasn't really an original? I don't Disney know. They, they they have never treated gargoyles very well. I think it's very difficult to get the entire <laughs> series and everything, too. So Should we call the ACLU? <laughs> yeah. Uh, then, there's no launch pad on this mug is my complaint a little bit here or uh, yeah. his, his daughter what what was her name Gosling yeah and Gosling. so that's weird but I do like that it says his phrase around the inner yeah. part of the now, uh, you know, I need to that flaps in the night you, you, you really need to be of a certain age group to connect with this stuff oh, I emotionally because this was stuff you guys watched as kids in the afternoon in the 90s yeah those oh, of yeah. us that were well into our 30s at that point, we were working. I, so I think I, and I know what this stuff really is. In the store and saw these. <laughs> yeah, I I, I I know what the what this stuff is, uh, but you know, and I think they're really cool. I think the mugs are really cool. Um, it's inside. I don't but, know if you can see that. 
This Which tail, one is this now? Tailspin. The Tailspin logo on the... And it's got the whole gang then, on there, too. And then uh, Don Carnage. And Don like, Carnage. <laughs> anyway, so those are the four mugs. They're my favorite. I love them. And so there's a total of four in this series? There is. Total four. Uh, once again, DuckTales, Darkwing Duck, and then Rescue Rangers, and then Tailspin. Did I say Tailspin already? Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. no, so there's a there's a series of T-shirts that accompany these as well, if you're interested. I am a little annoyed because the best ones are for women's, and why they yeah. didn't make those ones unisex. Whatever. It's cool. <laughs> but there were Darkwing Ducks T-shirts, uh, Goof Troop, and uh, I saw a Tailspin one, You've too. never shied away from wearing women's clothes. Hey, this was like... I, well, I won't when it's like and again, look on at the, the and, you know, and I, too bad we can't show it on camera. The jacket he he has. It is a men's jacket with a floral print. Floral. The hibiscus one. Right yeah, that the man in the <laughs> elevator at the hotel. Says, hibiscus. Excuse I'm me, seeing sir. dinosaurs and pink pizza. Oh yeah, everybody. Loves no, this is your. One. Oh, no, my other jacket. Your, this oh, yeah. jacket here that I'm looking at. This jacket now here. Show <laughs> show the people this. Check this jacket out. This is my rain jacket. Um, oh my god. Dinosaurs, pizza, purple pizza, because they're dinosaurs. It's prehistoric pizza. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Well, that, goes, that's yeah, what that's I said when I saw it. Historically accurate. Um, <laughs> okay. And finally, for the uh, last part of our show, uh, and thank you for that, uh, Katrina. Um, for the last part of our show, we are going to talk about Disneyland versus Disney World, same but different. And we'll be doing this on a recurring basis uh, every so often. Uh, we're actually going to start out with three attractions that I thought we could talk about where they're the same but different. And let's start off with one that's a little bit more nuanced in its differences, uh, the Haunted Mansion. We have a Haunted Mansion here in Orlando. We have a Haunted Mansion there in Disneyland. But there are some significant differences, not the least of which is the theme of the building. Uh, in Disneyland, this is in New Orleans Square. So it looks, this is more of a plantation a uh, plantation mansion as opposed to our mansion uh, in New York on the Hudson uh, here in, in Disney World. Um, what else do you want to tell us, Tyler, about some of the differences between the Haunted Mansions? Well, the differences, I mean, start you know on the outside like you said, but even as you walk through the door into the actual mansion, it's it has a waiting room where you can see a where you can see I assume uh, Gracie, he's he's got a portrait of himself and he's slowly changing into a, into a little ghost and it's that that's always one of my favorite touches that we don't have. It's like a picture in of Dorian Gray. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like a similar type of thing, and then uh, from a technical standpoint, we actually have in our stretching room. Our, our stretching room exists because it's an elevator. Correct. And Haunted Mansion is is under the ground. So when you're in yeah, Orlando, right. So when you're in the stretching room in Orlando, you're not actually going anywhere because you'd be if it went down that far, you'd be underwater. <laughs> um, uh, so the the roof of ours actually stretches, whereas in Disneyland, the floor actually. Uh, goes down so it's you're technically in an elevator going down one and you can feel right. it you can feel you can feel the difference definitely and 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 then once you get and even the sound effects and everything i think you can hear creaks and stuff a little bit more in the orlando counterpart which i really like but then once you're off the elevator um or once you, out of the stretching room i guess i should say uh in orlando you kind of just get straight on the ride and um and then you have a whole bunch of new scenes that we don't even have in Disneyland. In Disneyland, it goes straight into the endless hallway. That's kind of the first scene that we have in our ride where you can see the candelabra floating at the end. And in Orlando, it goes into, you can see a candelabra on a balcony, but then you keep on going and you see a phantom shadow uh, playing the piano. And there's the whole room that's like what is it like mc escher hold, hold up you based? missed an, you have missed an important difference here right away so okay go for it because when you come out of the stretching room in disneyland you're I, what what did you refer to it as no you you were talking about the hallway that's on the attraction you at disneyland you step out of the hallway and you're in what is technically our first scene in the doom buggy so you're you're yeah. walking down the hallway with those pictures with the lightning changes and it's that weird cat lady the lady who becomes a cat or something, and then the the ship that's like being wrecked by the 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 storm, and then uh, I forget what the other picture is, but the what Medusa, 
And then um, at the end of the hallway of your hallway, that's where the heads where they turn their head and follow you go are. Right. So you walk by those, which is kind of cre- creepy in its own right. But you essentially ride by those and ours. And then um, I don't, I can't remember. Now I can't remember because I'm thinking too hard about what ours is. But there was a <laughs> whatever. Go on, go on from there. Uh, I think that I think I really like your, the library in Orlando, though. That you, you know, you mentioned you get to walk past the bus in Disneyland, but I actually prefer the way they do it in Orlando simply because there's so many more bus yeah. that are like staring at you. And you can see the rocking chair moving by itself. Yeah. And um, you know, I, I personally think that I that I prefer Orlando's a little bit, <gasps> but it's always nice to see the where the inspiration came from, where the original is over in Disneyland. Katrina, I have to ask you, which do you prefer, Disneyland's version of the Haunted Mansion or Disney World's? Uh. That's a good question. There's like little attributes. Honestly, I think I like the California one because it also changes throughout the year. So it's it can kind of like it just differentiates because we do a Christmas version. Uh, but I don't know. It's hard because there's like little attributes. Like I like that one room that you guys have the with the eyes, like the, the, the wallpaper. With the staircases and then the bat wallpaper. Yeah. yeah. And there's like walls, you know, like the eyes, like, you know, like blink and flicker and stuff. So See, I and that is like my, really I, I got to be honest, that is my least favorite part. Really? Of the haunted like mansion, it. it's something that's different. That's like a newer part too. It, it is, and I didn't like. Right? I didn't like it when they added it. I still don't like it uh, now. Um, mm. But go, go ahead, Tyler. That's what true. else? What else is different as we go through your haunted mansion versus ours? Well, um, I mean, after you get past those first initial show scenes, a lot of the show is pretty pretty familiar. Uh, if you're, you know, they're both you got a big, pretty similar big animatronic. Um, <laughs> You have one big animatronic we don't have. We do have oh, the that's uh, true. hat box ghost. <laughs> yes. Which I, yeah, that's why I love our version more. As soon as you get out of the, or when you fall out of the, like, like a top part of the house. The attic. Yeah, the attic is what it's called. Uh, you see the hat box ghost. And I think that's like one uh, animatronic that I really love in ours. He's one of the most amazing pieces of Imagineer design that I've ever seen because you, his head really disappears and then shows up in the in the hat box and just the way he moves, the way the way he has the, his laugh and everything. He's he's honestly perfect. It's it, it's it is it's absolutely incredible and yeah. it's arguably my favorite favorite part about that particular attraction in California. Um, you also have, as you get to the end of the ride, your hitchhiking right. ghosts. Um, this is one place where I will definitely give world, uh, the world version, a tip of a hat. Tip of the hat. Uh, ours are much more interactive yeah, in they what like they do. Pull they, your face. They off. can pull your head off and switch it with the guy next to you, and they do all these cool special effects. When you're going toward that very, very last piece, where you're going past the mirrors, and you see the ghost in the car with you, uh, your version still has the old stuff that we always had where they're just kind of there, they're not really doing anything much. Um, where ours, there's a lot of special effects involved with it that I think is really cool. Yeah. However, in addition to Hatbox Ghost, uh, you just want to uh, reference what Katrina said, uh, starting in September usually, correct? Uh, yeah. Uh, for the Halloween and Christmas season, you do the Nightmare Before Christmas overlay, which is absolutely amazing and incredible and hands down beats anything yeah. we do here i think if you're if you are a big fan of the nightmare before christmas that this attraction could be grounds enough to plan a vacation around it i actually after that first trip we went i we, we went and then we went for d23 and then i was i saw really really inexpensive flights and i was like hmm and i went because i was still a cast member and i had a comp ticket and i was like i'm gonna go i gotta see this and i don't i didn't know how much longer it was gonna be a cast member for because it's working for you and so i i I think it's just it is mind blowing how quickly they can create what essentially when people call it an overlay I don't even know if that's fair because it is essentially a whole new storyline and a brand new attraction and it's just just new Easter eggs to look for every year and it kind of changes a little bit every time too. It's cool. Yeah, it's I mean when they added Sally two years ago oh, I think yes. it blew my mind because she looks so real yeah and it because you only could see her at the end she took place of the of the bride at the end when you're like getting off the little escalator thing but i was I, that's like something you really have to plan for to go see because it is something fantastic all right let's talk about another attraction that is near and dear to my heart um 
and the differences between them. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. Um, now this one, uh, this th- this one's a no brainer in terms of which one is better. Um, don't get me wrong, I love our Pirates of the Caribbean, but this is so much better on so many levels. It's almost sad. Um, so Katrina, why don't you tell us about the differences uh, with Pirates um, of the Caribbean? It's definitely so like Florida version, you kind of go through like like a, like a castle kind of thing, like a and so you see like all this ammo and everything. And then in California, you pretty much go like right into the ride when you're going through the queue. Yeah, there you is see all the no themed. By. There is no themed queue whatsoever. Um, you just go around and around, and then you finally just get on and go. And then um, ours is really cool uh, in California because you have like you go through the bayou, and it's kind of just like relaxing and quiet and you you know see the blue bayou off to the side and right there's a restaurant for those not familiar there's a restaurant called the blue bayou which is really part of part of this attraction um and as you're going as you first launch off of your boat you're going through the bayou on the left you have some theme scenes but on your right is the Blue Bayou restaurant. So when you're eating there, you're watching the boats go like past. the Mexico Pavilion. And, very and similar, very exactly. Similar. Yeah. It's a good yeah. good, uh, good uh, uh, comparison. comparison, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Katrina. Uh, and then you see like the fireflies in the bayou, and then if you look up I in the sky, you can see like a shooting star, which is kind of, it's just it's like little, these little quirks in Disneyland that just kind of make it special. Um, and then in Florida, you kind of just go into that like mermaid scene, which I'm not, I don't know. I'm not a really big fan of that scene. Um, the effects never even work in it anymore. Yeah. They used to have the water effect, and it worked for like two I think weeks. I saw the effect like once uh, when I was there, but I was never – I mean, the song is catchy, you know, but I just never really liked it. But for ours, you just go right in that first drop, and you just get sucked into being a pirate, and it's just so – it's just like that one. It's like um, Florida doesn't even have a drop, really. No, uh, we do. Um, we do have a drop. It has one drop. It has one drop. One drop then... where you have two. But your drop makes sense. Your, I mean, your the way your story is told. I like. Okay, so there. You know, you have the argument that there is no themed queue, and our queue is definitely superior because they're in that like castle, which is really interesting. But yours, I like that it. You kind of start without the queue because you're already in Louisiana, and then so it does bring you in the bayou, and then it pulls you in. like it starts this slow storytelling that really just kind of pulls you in the same way the ride moves and so you take that drop and you see all the skeletons like you got that guy that skeleton in the bed that supposedly has the human skull that's a real human skull above him and then like all the gold everywhere with like the cobwebs and like the pirates that were fighting and stabbing each other and I'm like, oh, this is where they got the idea for the movie from because I never understood where it came from the original movie from our attraction but then it drops again and they're alive and I just I love that that double layer of storytelling that it's kind of doing that ours I think you can grow up and go to ours and be like this is a great attraction but never know that you've actually missed out on essentially what is like the first two there chapters. is there is really first of all the Disneyland version of this attraction is considerably longer than um, the Walt Disney World version um, and there's effectively like I don't know what two to three minutes of this ride yeah. that we just don't have beginning and they cut out like a yeah. full quarter like a full yeah. quarter of the ride is gone in it, Orlando is and so like I was like because I only ever did it in Orlando before my first trip out there I did it out there I'm like whoa yeah I mean it's significant how how big the differences are because and I think the reason I wanted to kind of focus on some of this stuff is that a lot of things I hear from people when they talk about going to Disneyland, oh, they have the same things at World. Well, yes, there are similar attractions, Yeah. Um, but there are cons- there are some significant differences with a lot of them. So uh, that's why I wanted to kind of focus on this stuff. Um, but overall, the Pirates of the Caribbean in- There's no question. California, yeah. far mm-hmm. superior far superior to ours in Orlando. Um, And lastly, let's talk about Space Mountain. Um, Again, same attraction, right? Space Mountain and Space Mountain, both in Tomorrowland on both coasts. 
two very, very, very different attractions. Yeah, oh, geez, yeah. When you yeah. get inside. So, Rhino, why don't you talk about the differences between these two? Okay, so our our Space Mountain, I feel like, has the they even look similar from the outside. You know, the structure kind of looks the same. Um, ours has what feels like the never ending three mile stretch down the space corridor. And then yours, your queue kind of goes through that restaurant behind what is currently Pizza Planet, which is normally Pizza Port, right? And then you go up onto the roof and then into like a very small portion of the queue that uh, you it's similar to ours, but different because you have that big giant ship that is in the in the center of the queue. Um, what I love about yours is that you the cart itself that you sit in the spaceship is different. You're not one, two, three, four, five, six. You are two, four, six. So you sit um, side by side instead of front to back and. Um, it really makes all the difference because the seats too are normal height seats and they have speakers in the back. So, you know, when you go to onto this attraction and you're blasting off and it's playing this music, I don't, you just get like, whoa, that's exciting. Plus, I, I, I don't want to overlook the fact that the the ride vehicles at Space Mountain in California are so much more comfortable. Oh, yeah. They, they were made for people who were above the height of 5'5". Five, five. Yeah. So, because ours, you get in. I have a friend who's like 6'4", and I'm like, Tim, I don't know how, one, for your head not getting chopped off, and two, how do your legs even get in here? You know, it's it's just, it's crazy. Like, they're, yours just seems so much more new, and I, I know it, I think it had a, uh, like, a renovation or an update yeah. a couple of years back, but... I also it definitely lo- has had multiple refurbishments, and they redid the entire track a few years. Okay, ago, that's what I so. thought, and so yeah. it's very, very smooth. Like ours is very. I sometimes feel that the car may detach from the rail, and I may lose my life. <laughs> so it's thrilling in that you're sense. You're making it sound so scary right oh, no. now. I haven't ridden the one in Florida, and you're making me even. Oh, want, it's not that it's scary. It's, it's not scared. that. It's not that ours is scary per se. It's just uncomfortable. It's yeah. an uncomfortable attraction. Your tailbone can feel every bump you make. But what's really cool about yours that I love is that you have abilities to do overlays as well. So you have Ghost Galaxy during Halloween, which makes no sense to me because even though I believe in ghosts, I don't believe that they're floating in outer space. That seems weird. But then you have um, <laughs> Haunted uh, – not Haunted Mansion. Sorry. The Hyperspace. Hyperspace Mountain. Hyperspace yeah. Mountain, which, which is what? It's so it's a Star Wars overlay. So when you're going up that first hill, you're jumping into hyperspace, and so it does the hyperspace spin because they have um, screens kind of on the wall where they can do projections and stuff. And then you're in a space battle, and you're you're you know you're a part of the Rebel Alliance, so you're getting communicated with, and you can see like Tie Fighters flying at you and everything. And it's just every time I go on that, it's it's like really really cool. Like I I just I'm kind of blown away by how easily. And not easily, I don't mean to undermine it, but how these attractions at Disney World, how they can really just do these little touch, these little special moments and overlays to it. And it can go back to the classic ride and like like that too, you know? Yeah. Oh, cool. I think they yeah. said it can do it in an hour for hyperspace. All they have to do is like change a sign and do a couple other things and then it's it's good to go. Oh, wow. Because the, they just yeah. changed it back to Space Mountain within like a day. From hyperspace from to Space Mountain. Yeah, it makes sense. That's that's the nice thing about that ride for them is that it's all dark, so they can leave up. Like, even the laser effects and stuff, they can just leave that stuff up and nobody's going to see them. So. <laughs> well, no, it's but, definitely, again, you know, uh, same but different. Yeah. Hence the name of the, the piece. All right, that is going to do it, folks, for this, our first new episode of the Disneyland edition of the Diz Unplugged. We hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to encourage you all to... Uh, go ahead and send us some feedback. Uh, podcast at www.info.com. Ask us some questions. Tell us what you'd like to hear more about. That is... Sorry. No, sorry. P- podcast at... What did I say? Yeah, you said www.info. It's oh, podcast, podcast at, at disunplug.com. Sorry. sorry. I had to double check in my head. Podcast at disunplug.com. And uh, going to do something we used to do on the Disney World edition of this show back in the beginning. Um, if we read your uh, email on our show... We're going to give you a $25 Disney gift card to say thanks. So go ahead and send in that feedback, podcast at disunplugged.com, and tell us what you'd like, any questions you have, or what you'd like to hear more of. And with that, we will end this show. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you again next week with another edition of the Disneyland version of the Dis Unplugged. Have a great week, everyone.